<laughs> Yo, it's your boy B Bowen. It's your boy A Butter. And it's the first street ball basketball podcast, Streets First. Streets First. Today we got the legendary OG. It's just me. OG. <laughs> OG. Mentor. Appreciate you. Boss man, Thank you Chris Gotti from Murder Inc. Yes. Yeah. Thank y'all for having me. Thank man. you for being here, man. Nah, man, it was it was, a, it was a pleasure having you to, to come on the show, man. Yeah. It's a, it's an honor, man, to have you, man, because, you know, it's somebody crazy. like I you. I just seen Greg leave. That was dope, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, I catch Greg only at the park sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> we were sitting there talking to Greg about back in the days, you know what I'm saying, when it came to Rucker and how, you know, he touched people and how was it like, you know, bringing the tournaments. Just speaking on you, Chris, yeah. knowing, you know, you and Murder Inc. and y'all was in a tournament. What was that like for you back then? Man, it was it was absolutely a must. You know, it's funny because my brother Irv, Irv, what up, boy? Shout out to Irv. You know Irv Gotti. You know Irv Gotti, you know what I'm saying? He's out on the West Coast right now. But when I brought it to Irv, because I'm a basketball head, he's a basketball head. I see head. you at all the tournaments, Chris. All the you tournaments. Know, we, and we yin like, we together for everything, me and my brother. So at the end of the day, I was like, man, I want to get up in the rough. <laughs> you know, you have all the legendary you stories heard, you from heard, back you hear them. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny. I could give you a quick story for me personally. Like, I remember seeing Mark Jackson, Rod Strickland. I remember Mark gave, uh, Jesus. you know, uh, damn, oh, what's his name? Oh, man, my fault. It's my man, too. Well, Mark played with Bimmy, though. I know what you're getting ready all to go day. to. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're Do you remember all, all day? day. Steve all Burke. Steve day. Burke. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Mark gave him 48. Burke gave him 64. Ooh. Then we went from we went from City College to Rucker, and they had to play again against wow. each other. Yeah, yo, crazy. Mark had like thirty. Burke had fifty six. <laughs> Shout out to Steve Burke so Senior. All day, but still all day, playing to my, this day. Yeah, but these days when I those are the things that really influenced me to say, man, I gotta come in this park. I gotta, I want to be part of this. Yeah, you know, just going back. I mean, I seen a lot in that park, so I was like, I wanted to bring a team in there, right, and bring that influence for hip hop with the players that I could reach and touch, right. It just bring something back to the hood, you know what I'm saying? I love doing stuff for the hood like that. You know, I'm a, I'm a Hollis Queens dude, but I'm from the United States of America. Shout but out any to hood Queens. USA, Shout out to New York. You know Queens what I'm saying? We all the same. Any hood USA, it's all good. Right. Know? So at the end of the day, I love doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? And the Ruckers being a legendary park and Murder Inc. being what we was at the time. Right. It made so much sense. Tell them who you brought in the building for us, though, because I was getting ready to brag. I don't know if B yeah. was getting ready to yeah, brag. No, I, I, I was getting ready. I was. I just everybody I just, couldn't bring in nah. power players. That's all I'm trying to say. Every nah, certain brought, people. Wait, wait, before, before everybody couldn't do that. But Chris. see, let's let's nah, make no question, let's, no question. let's you know make mean? it clear before we even get into the legendary stories. Yeah. You know, Streets First is a is a podcast that we wanted to have that platform where people like yourself could really come in and educate. And catch people up to speed of yeah. what really went down back in those days. And the what? politics of it. There's a lot that a people lot don't understand when they see what happens. They don't understand what it took to get to that finished product. Absolutely. Right? You know. But yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I was blessed because, me, like, we was blessed. So when I told my brother, you know, Greg told that quick story how everyone was waiting to pay and everything. And I was like, nah. Let's He's go. not waiting. Right. Come and get Made it. Made a statement. Yeah. Right off But the door. I did it for a reason because my brother was like, Whatever you doing, go ahead, I don't care. Right. He's focused on music, 50,000. Like, it was real. And you know, cause the ideas, he's really just a ball of ideas. He's different, I knew that from the little. So when we get to this uh, basketball, he wasn't worried about basketball. He wanted to come out and support it, of course, but he he's focused on vision. music. I ain't got time to be up in the park. And, and, and all of that, you know what I'm saying? Fifty thousand for a meeting, nigga. Together, I wouldn't have time to be in the park either. either. <laughs> <laughs> no real numbers. No, that's real talk. Oh no, no, for sure. I just don't want to tell you the execs that pay because nah. they still exact. Hey man, right. I know. <laughs> hey right. Chris, I know niggas that don't get fifty just to do a walkthrough. Nah, they pay us. You, you feel to what talk. I'm saying? That's just the talk. Conversation. You feel me? Right. <laughs> Conversation. So at the end of the day, we, we he was like, "You gonna do it? Then do it." Right. All right, I'm doing it. So then I start putting team, and he didn't want no whack team. So you know, we putting together the plays. I always wanted to rep my my hood queen, so I had my queens plays with me. A butter, shout out to them. They were strong. A butter played with me. 
<laughs> I did, Chris. I oh, you go to eight two, fam? <laughs> I thought you were just on Terror Squad, fam. No, he's Terror Squad. We caught a little run. He caught a little run. Nothing crazy. Yo, hey. All right. Look, we Listen, look when he when was killing. What you want to do? When you build, hey, I want, I want nice quality. And, and you know what people is is those people. It was, you know what I'm saying. It was nah, a good quality sure. about him that I'm not just gonna sit here and say. Nah, I'm not playing like this. This is a loyalty. Like now, nah, when it come to good people. You got to see that. You know, yeah, like I said, sure. look, he's still around and in I'm, basketball. I'm a gambler. That, those see, those people, people not like... even still around in basketball. He's still around in basketball. Yeah, you this this is in my yeah. DNA. Yeah. But, you know, the whole part of Rutgers, I like, you know, Preem, the big homie, they used to go up there and Black Jess, God bless the dead, and get okay. their teams together. And, but it would be money on the wood. Mm. I'm from that era. Like, that's what I wanted to bring into the game. Okay. And, you know, I ain't going to lie. Me and Joe, we went at it. Right. You know, there was very a lot of currency exchange back and forth. I don't, I don't. It, it, it was. Yo, it, I know, I know oh, that we remember. Oh, not, we're, not, we're not gonna talk no numbers, oh, but yeah. it was a bag oh, for Lord. that game. Absolutely, it was and let a me bag. Tell you something. Joe cheats. <laughs> I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call it out. Joe, Joe, we gonna give Joe, you a chance. Joe, we gonna you give you a chance, Craig. Yo, Joe, we gonna give Yo, you a crack chance to speak your piece. <laughs> he cheats though. <laughs> we played crack, and listen, I brought in Baron Davis with me. Derek Ooh. Anderson. Okay, Derek Anderson. I Come on, like the prosecutor. Forget. Come on. Yeah. You understand? Know but he right. had six NBA players on his team. Who do you have? Come Sean on. Sean Marion. Sean Marion, which I told him, I said, Coutinho Sean, you come in the park. Mobley. You can't come in the because that, he was supposed to play for me, and he didn't because Joe got him. I don't know how Joe did it. Back then, he beat me to the punch yeah. to every play. Stephon Marbury. Coutinho Mobley. Come on. He, you know it was just, saying? it was like, yo, you got a five to me. Jermaine O'Neal. But <laughs> he had a seven foot in the park. See, now I'm a street baller, okay? So let me tell you something about street balling. I'm going to tell you something about street balling. I Al tell Harrington. everyone. Al Harrington. <laughs> he named him. These, like, listen to me. They was going to play for Zach me. Zach Randolph. <laughs> Right now. Right. I'm going to tell you the problem with what I gave him. I said, anything 6'9", I'll deal with. Right. Anything above that, if it's not a street ball uh, player yeah, that yeah, I could yeah. get. Ain't no seven foot street ball player. But when we get in the park, it's a guard game. But right. when you got seven footers, come on. It's not right, You're yo. cheating, Joe. You're cheating, crack. <laughs> I, ain't, I can't get it. I got to go to the NBA or something to get a player to even compete in that with that type of player Word. any guards you get i love to let uh young kids young guards that are nice play against the best right or with the best because you right. definitely it's had education. andre you had andre barrett on your come team on. you had come kenny on. satterfield oh, yeah. on yeah, your team sat. listen to me no, he saying, had a group he had prime i'm, 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 I'm naming prime they just spoke about Jeez, prime objective i brought him up i brought him yeah they yeah they, yeah yeah mm. yeah last, last man i ain't gonna yeah. lie to you lonnie was my ace See? right there but again he's a player he's a street player yeah. Right? You know, Grant, this nigga was something special. Yeah. And um Because he went to the Listen, pros I too. brought I brought the king of all kings to the I, I was getting ready to get into that. And again, Baron Davis was a monster. That's when we called him too easy. Boom too Dizzle. What up, BD? That's when, <laughs> that was his nigga. Shout out to BD. But too it was that it was just easy. that. He that's when he had his bounce. Man, that Erky Jerry. No. I already Dunk know. I already know. And he came to kill. They, that's a lot of NBA players. They come out. Yeah, there. Everybody was on a too cool shit. Too cool. No, there was some. They when they start getting at them, then they, then, then they, they got to get sick. Yeah, then then I know you had your experience, that, man. You put it on somebody. Hey, that whole, but I don't <laughs> well, hold on. Speaking of that, <laughs> hey, buddy, Vince Carter, was right? There. Was Vince Carter? Was it Vince Carter? Hey, you know, he got he got wild hype. He came in, and I ain't gonna lie, Lonnie brought him to the yeah. game, but he DC also told him. He also told him, because when he got on the court, he said, my man told me about you. Be like, yo, when I leave off this court, don't worry, I'm going to make you better. I didn't understand that at the time of 17 when he said that. And this is Vince Carter talking this, to yes, a, yeah. the young A. Butter. Man. Nah, this is real. This is what it's all about. I guess Word he up. must have seen from after what he heard and then from what he's seen, I guess he could see that that strive, if it comes through, you're going to see that I motivated you yeah. to be able to yeah. step up. You know what I mean? You, and it shine. Let me it, tell you, see, see, this is what I got with young players. If they, when Y'all young players listening. See, A. Butter did it. He said 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, he got to take that with him. Yeah. 
You got to take that with him because he just was able to play with, at the time, VC is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hall yeah, of Famer, yeah, first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're talking about. You ain't yeah. talking about somebody that's just made it. Right. No, you're talking about the best. He was yeah. rookie of the year that year in the NBA. Like, come on. And and what I, what you did with him was handled. Yeah, A introduced himself that day. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world. A introduced <laughs> Hello, himself. Hello, my name is. <laughs> <laughs> I got the call hey, like what, Yo B. What Mark look, said, hand down, man, man down. down. Yeah. I got the call on that one. Real talk. Again, that's the now you gotta just take that 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 energy and, and consistency and professionalism. Yeah. And you could go to these next levels. Yeah. But that's what they do. That's yeah. what people don't understand. I give all the credit to the best players in the world because everyone we just mentioned, because they making the money and they still working out. That's they still right. training. Yeah. You know, that's the hardest part. When you get that money to still go to the gym and bust your ass and so you can stay competing. People don't realize they think it could just turn it on and off. You'll be a regular player and then you'll be out. There. Real quick before you tell them, I just wanted to say off of what you was just saying is what I said to a person before. A lot of people was looking at back then money, power, respect. Yeah. And the way you just broke it down. This is what we trying to help the next generation see. Respect, power, money. Yeah. Like when you put that work in, like LeBron is that, to Fact. me, is the model of that. Like he put that work in to get that man respect. Last night. Man, you know what I'm up? saying? He put that work in to get that respect. Yeah. And with that respect, what he been doing in the NBA, that brought a lot of power to him. He's the king. Let me tell you what I told Mav Look at the money night. he's able to make now. I'm going to tell you what, what I, mean? I told Mav Mav Maverick Carter. Uh oh. So LeBron's one of his three. I know, you know, three PR, people. what up, PR? You know what I'm so I'm sitting there and we meet up. We was in 4040 and we talking. And I told him, I said, let LeBron know. Because, you know, I got LeBron, you know what I'm saying? I don't see him all the time. Like, we cool, but I don't see him all the time and shit. And I said, let him know what he did it was unbelievable. I said, because there's certain things no one's talking about. You had the best team, arguably, in Golden State with the best record ever in basketball. Yep. Numbers, everyone talking numbers, so you got to throw it out. You educate them. Okay? Having Cleveland down 3-1 in the finals. In the finals. The best team, arguably, ever up on a team 3-1 to one and doesn't win. And don't win. And don't win. Man. That goes, Man, that speaks I, educate I told, I told, I told, I told uh, Mav, I said, LeBron shouldn't be saying it, but somebody should, should be, be saying, saying that shit. Oh, yeah. You know, LeBron him, gets a lot of hate because of the way him. he approaches things right. and the way he does things. And I understand the hate. That's America. <laughs> I understand it because you at the top and he's a freak of nature too. Like, let's keep it 100. Yeah. <laughs> freak. Yeah, that not, he not when he normal. He say freak of nature. He trying that's, to explain it's not normal. You can't figure it out. Right, you can't figure that's it out. That's not, there's no defense. It's right. a bad <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're hoping he misses. <laughs> you're hoping he does some mistake. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, God, damn, but I also know this? he took that model and watch who we getting ready to talk to. You oh, about. no question. That's Come what on. I'm a fan of. I'm giving LeBron a lot of props, but I've always oh, been on, a big man. fan you know, of it, Cole. Like, could I you put, let us we know? We can talk about all of that. Hold can on. you tell me what that's like? I, hold on. I want to know what that was like. But that's what this Kobe, is. Kobe, what up? The legendary <laughs> stories, man. I'm going to give you the story Jeez. how we Street's got Kobe. First. I'm going to give you the story Jeez. how we got Street's Kobe. Hold on. Let's be clear. I'm going to give you the story how Kobe got to Murder Inc. to come through. Hold on. Murder Inc. was the first team to bring Kobe Bryant to Rucker Park. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Kobe Bryant, the black mama, they form. called him the five rings. At the <laughs> time. They called the time. Exactly at that time, Mr. Five Rings. Yeah, they called him the Lord, How, no, the Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Excuse Rings. The Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings. The of the Rings. The of the Rings. All right, hold on. Can you please educate, and I'm pretty sure, yeah. to all the fans and the listeners of just the basketball culture, how the hell did you pull that off? By the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, thank you. <laughs> Shout out to you, Cole. No, no, all jokes aside. So, you know, my brother, like, again, Irv is a marketing genius. So we're sitting there. We go to um, a dinner meeting. It's me, Irv, Kobe Bryant, Steve Stout, the commissioner. What up, boy? Mm. And Steve, uh, what up? Peter Arnell. So Peter Arnell is a huge marketing guy mm -hmm. that owns this home firm. At the time, Steve Stout was working for him in his company. And they had the campaign for to do uh, all the commercials for Kobe Bryant. 
Kobe Bryant was in the transition. He's just left Nike to go to Adidas. Mm. If you remember, this was early. That was that time. That's that, even deeper that's too. That's to even say. deeper. It's Listen to me. That's even early deeper. in the game. Early. So he's with Adidas at the time, and they're talking commercials. So Irv is telling them the commercials he wants to run because we believe we just reached out to. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, man, Kawhi, what up, boy? Thank you for the interview. Yo, thank you, Kawhi. One, so listen to me. Oof. We we talking to we talking to Kobe about this whole thing, and um, this commercial. Irv gives him the whole breakdown of how he wants this whole commercial to go. Kobe goes crazy. Peter Arnell, the boss of this marketing firm, yeah, I know. he's going nuts. Mm. He's like, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I slip in the little, yo, you ever want to play in the park? Right. He said, what you talking about? I said, Ruckers, you know, come out around the back <laughs> in the park. That man went nuts. Kobe now go crazy. Yo, what? Yo, I've been wanting to do that my whole life. Yo, I want to, yo, when? I know you didn't think you was going to get I that type of response. I, I know. That. Kobe went crazy. I'm Legendary. sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's like, yo, we working my schedule out? Because, you know, he, this dude is a super, superstar. Like, so busy scheduling. It's just hard to get a me, meeting. Right, right. Like, we was eating dinner. He has to eat, so that's easy. You know what I'm saying? Easy sure. to catch. But, man, to get him, and he was like, I'm there. We worked out the schedule, security, everything. Because this guy got security like Secret Service. For real, for real. Like, that's what it was. And you remember the park. Yeah. Oh, yo, my God. They swept the whole park. They like, yo, which, yo, this is the way we're going. They made us give them the route. It was so where crazy. They're pulling they in promoted. everything. They wouldn't they, promote Greg it. Was yeah, like, he couldn't. He, he was scared. The time, they weren't even promoted. I he told waited. him I'm bringing them. He waited yeah. until yeah. I'm on the mic. Yeah. Uh, right yeah. before the game, maybe 20 or 30 minutes before the game. So by the time... They was just say for instance, by the time they was getting ready and getting dressed in the back and getting ready to come on the court, the park is already a little bit crowded. But I'm talking about them phone calls to other people and how fast that line went. If from it was right today, to yo, that shit was, oh, was today. man, yo, it probably wouldn't even went off because the social media is so fast. Pandemonium. Yeah. You're thinking about when it happened. Word. We didn't have this so, have social that. media shit. Everybody got on their phone. The call. line used to be wrapped around the corner like it was the club. Listen, this Ooh, shit was fuck, it was legendary, man. And honestly, it's still to this day one of my best moments in the park ever. Or all the parks, and I done dealt with. Man, Kevin Durant, everybody coming through. Like, so for me, this was like a big deal, like special. The crazy part about it is he was, there's a couple things that happened that day that was crazy. First of all, he had came to the park and got no sneakers or nothing. So how we get him shoes? I bought him Nikes. Let's go. He's an Adidas contract. <laughs> They didn't even see that. Though. Let's go. I, I still got the listen. I still know. got the I still got the sneakers. They signed in the box, the glass box, frames, everything. I made them sign it, took them off his dope. feet and everything. Shout out to I Nike. still got it. Shout I out still to got it. And he played it like we got him some like what's some uptowns? You know what I'm saying? Regular bullshit. We know we know which ones yeah. you talking about. Regular, yeah. not real. You know what I'm saying? Like up to date basketballs. We just got him some uptowns with and the he, orange because we had orange. And he played an orange swipe. And he played in them. Played in them. It started raining at half. That was the only thing. That was the downside. Oh. He didn't want to stop. It wasn't raining. It was misty. You know that misty would make right, the court right, a right, little yeah, bit yeah, wet. Yeah, he yeah, wouldn't. He might let slip. me tell you something. The he didn't man want to stop was like, though. No, I'm not stopping. But something else happened. I'm telling you, it was so special. He got to play with Lonnie as well. Mm. Come on. We gonna Lonnie, get, Lonnie, Lonnie gonna get on the show. Let he was Lonnie get to on the show and talk come. about it because I got Lonnie a try with the LA Lakers behind that whole fucking deck. Just off of that. Because Kobe street. said, Look. yo, who the fuck is that? Look, he Legendary. I want, him, to I want him to come play That's with me. Dope, Legendary. Man. Legendary. That's you know, Lonnie was one of the most talented non-NBA players I ever seen. We was in just talking about Lonnie and the platform that Greg has built for guys like that to have an opportunity to go and one day play for the Lakers. That's every kid's dream. That's every street ball player's dream. Up north, my man Seth Marshall, Ooh. chairman of the boys. Yes. All of these, that's my queens, my Hollis queens play. Yeah, I, I, mean, I remember. Seth, we go back since little. He was a problem. Seth. 
Seth was a problem. I Put him in for Seth. 30 plus every game, no problem. He, you couldn't, he was too strong for guards. Junie Sanders. Yeah. General Electric. <laughs> yeah. Y'all had Junie <laughs> too? I'm telling you, they was doing, yo, listen. We was moving, man. we was moving. But they were regular, we was moving. you know what I mean? We, we spreading love. <laughs> we had Wally Dixon, come on. Yo, Wally was. <laughs> main event. We told him every time serious. he dunked, we was hitting him with money. Every time he threw up the dunk and murder the ink. Murder! <laughs> you know, Wally used to bang that shit. Yeah, yeah. come on. Wally he was a fucking, he was a beast, was man. was different. Yeah. Mad hops. But this is, but see, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, this shit is just so good to hear. Yeah. You know, Chris and Irv to bring shit like that to the community because you got kids who couldn't afford to go to a basketball game. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now you get to go to Rucker for free, free and see some of your favorite legends up close in person. And it's guys like these guys who set that table for them. Okay, you right. know what I mean? Like you know, that trying, shit is epic in about, itself, one man. One thing I'm worried about, or what I don't like today, mm -hmm. is again, it's sad. I hate it. I hate it because I want all my brothers to get money. Doubt. When you get, but the NBA's numbers is so inflated now because, really, because of the dude Sterling, the racists out there, the LA, the LA yeah. owner that got yeah. booted, yeah. and Bomber, Steve Bomber, the dude who bought it. See, this is when business hits basketball. Educate them, and they don't understand. You may not understand why your checks are getting more now. But that's why every basketball team is now a billion dollar business. Not for sure, and it wasn't Question. before. No. So now, because of that whole incident, and he overpaid, Steve Ballmer overpaid for the Lakers, I mean the Clippers, because he just wanted to be in. And that's what happened. So he overpaid and got him. So now, you can't be, you can't do nothing. You know what I'm right. saying? It affects Stop. every team. That's right. And the balance sheets. Right. So budgets go up. Bargain agreements go up. Educated. Everything goes up. So he really inflated the whole <laughs> industry the of whole the NBA. NBA. That's right. But what that does is affects players. So B, B and C level players, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They overpaid now. Yeah. And it's very hard for people to stay disciplined. Yeah. So yeah. the league is going to suffer. Yeah. Because of that. And I want niggas to get money, but stay disciplined. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the way they move around now is crazy too. Yeah. I mean, is that what you mean when you're telling them, basically, you're saying stay disciplined? I, like, Discipline is work. I'm work only, okay. When I say stay disciplined, you moving around has nothing to do with it. I'm talking about you putting in the work to be an NBA player. There you go. To put on the product that the, the people want to see. So when I see guys in the league and I'm like, oh, he's stealing money. You know what I'm saying? He's right. not putting in the work. He's not right. putting in the work. I get what you're saying. And it's again, you get guaranteed contracts in the NBA, so three years, five years, you you getting your money, no matter what you do. That's why it's so hard to stay disciplined. Mm -hmm. You know, you could like fuck you to the coach. It's a players' league now. If you think yeah. about go back, it wasn't. It was really a, a infrastructure. It was the team. The teams don't control these players. Not but anymore. I think that's why I'm saying it's players' league and then. You know, I, I put it to the inmates running the asylum. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Think about it if you in jail. So yeah. that's what's happening. So players with all their eccentric ideas, that's why you see the styles are so crazy now and the way they dress and move around. You ain't doing that shit with the San Antonio Spurs, though. Yeah, because, see, you get, you still have. Look at what you're about you, to tell you. You still right? have the owner right. and the coach. Right. On the same. That, I don't care. If you come over here, this is what it is. And they interview. that. It, I'd seen an interview with Popovich, and he said, I only want character plays. Yeah. So he's going to hit, which means to me, he'll forego a more talented player because you're not a high character person. Mm -hmm. As your character, as a person, as a man. Mm -hmm. And if he sees that, I don't want you here. You're cancer to my team. Yeah. And that's why they're always up there. That's they, why they're always successful. <laughs> You NBA know, and if you look at all the plays, even like I just mentioned Kawhi, what up? Kawhi, come on, let's what? work. <laughs> but Kawhi Leonard, character dude, this dude is, he, man, you know how hard it was for me to get a number on this dude? Kawhi, just, to, just to contact him. Because he's he doesn't want the riffraff, he doesn't want nothing. He's focused on one thing, being the best player he could be. Yeah. And it's a short-lived life, and I tell, I tell people this all the time, players, especially young kids, high school, and I tell them all the time, I'm 49. I'm doing the same shit I was doing at 19. You only if have a certain amount of time as a basketball player. Right. Talk to a veteran and they'll tell you, yeah. Sam Cassell is my man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Sam, me and Sam talk, the minute he get a coaching job, I'll be a coach in the NBA. <laughs> now, I promise you, I'm not joking. 
That's something I want to do. It's not about money. He knows that. It's about right. something I want to do. Right. And I said, yeah. It's, it's just something I want to do because I see passion. certain flaws in the league and stuff that I want to Shit, the league can use try. you. I, absolutely. Shit. But, you know, those things for me is why the league is going to be in trouble from a player. That's why the teams, again, and they're, now they're loading up. The NBA, if you're the commissioner, you, don't, you want balance. Right. That's what makes a great league. Good teams, all good teams, competitive, fills the stands up. Who's gonna win? When it's lopsided, it's like, uh, yeah. You think it's getting ready to be lopsided? It is lopsided. Oh, it's already lopsided. It's been lopsided for a few years. It's getting worse because teams are teaming up, like players oh, are teaming I, I up. Oh, I got you. I got you. Right? If you think about it, like how many teams are in the East? For how many years it was only the Miami Heat when LeBron was in now it's Cleveland. Like, who really has a chance? And I'm a New York fan. Mello, what up? I'm Mel, a huge up, New bro? York fan. Okay, my whole life. I go down this year though, baby. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that that everything gonna come together real fast, but I'm just saying. Okay, so the all right, possibility all, and the, and, okay, and the so, hope is good to go with. That's okay, hope. Listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna That's give all. you. I'm gonna give you, the hope is can they can they beat Cleveland in seven? For sure, I think so. The Knicks could beat Cleveland in seven. I'm riding with the Knicks. I'm a New Yorker. You, I know. you basically saying when you really look at it you and you understand how they, they play as a seven. team, and I'm these a New guys Yorker. don't understand I am too. yet as a team. I, I would, love the I Knicks. You know what's that. so sad? I you, wouldn't give them that. You know what's so sad? I've been, I, you know, I had the privilege. I, I usually get my floor seats and I sit next to. See, James but that's Dole. also faith versus waiting to see it. You ain't gonna believe in the Knicks until they show it to you then. No, I, I'm rooting for them all the way. Oh, alright, say no more then. Alright, I'm rooting for them all the way. Well, so then if you root for them, I got faith that they will win in game seven. Jesus. Pray. I have faith in God. Jesus. That is mankind. I see where you go. Yo, Chris. How you going to say? Hey, yo, because I had to understand. Hold up. That other thing saying you see him. And, and no, you made a point, but I, listen, I didn't know I'm if you saw his point. You made a point, I'm like, yo. For them. But here's the reality. Mello's if you're going to bring have Mello's, my back, man. Look, look, I right, love Mello. Right, and everyone right, criticized Mello when they talked. I shit on him. But God got my back, so I'm I got to leave your back Anyone talk about, about Mello, I shit yeah. on him because they don't understand the game. Real talk. I said, first and foremost, he, when he came to the Knicks, was he a top five player in the league? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you yeah. cannot criticize the Knicks for getting the top five player in the Hell league. yeah, shout so out now, to them. So now when you do that, how come the Knicks, and this is what I tell them, didn't build around the player who they know exactly how he plays and flaws and greatnesses, right? Which is and build job. around, and that's their fucking job. You're right. <laughs> how come they didn't play, build around? Then they go get Phil Jackson. Hold on. Who wants to tell this man in his stage of his career what he wants? Change your game. Are you fucking, fucking crazy? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but that's why they need that's people. That's That's why we need people like you. Didn't you hired me is. to change my game. You hired me to play my, my game. game. Exactly. And that's why I'm like, Phil's a piece of shit. You hear that, Phil? Yeah. It's the truth. And I get. Don't I tell me how great he is when he had all the best players playing with him mm -hmm. at in their era. Mm -hmm. Again, he's a great manager of talent. I right. would give him that. Right. But that's why the they, they, but look, Popovich front, is a great coach. Their front office, they different. make terrible decisions. That's a big difference. And I also <laughs> think too, we Pat got Riley is yeah, a great yeah, coach. Yeah, but the next week. Think of what Pat Riley did. But look, right. But he also had a showtime in he, LA. He also had an influence. Then took Woo. the beef, the niggas that's gonna brawl with you, and took them all away. No, absolutely, because and, come on, that's what a great coach is. He analyzed talent, what he has, and made them perform the best they can. And he also and, provided, and yeah, he provided that influence. And the Knicks, mm. we lack that shit. Okay, this how is the one. fuck can Jeff Hornacek <laughs> come and have an he influence? Can. Okay, so I'm gonna go back on like, Derrick Rose and <laughs> fucking Carmelo <laughs> and fuck is Mark Jackson. Can and we I'm get Mark Jackson on the phone? You, you want to talk about why? Part of that this is my problem with some... the Knicks, and I had the privilege to sit next to him. You know, because I'm blessed. I went from the bleachers. Y'all ain't going to say nothing about them keeping a seat for Spike? But listen, man. No. Well, he's grandfathered in. He's grandfathered in. Okay. He's grandfathered in. Honestly, I just wanted to throw some credit There's a few play, There's a few other people that's not Spike Lee, but they're well, reputable people that are grandfathered into those seats. They right. always trying Stocks. to get that extra. Not Stocks. Stocks. You know that Stocks? No, Stocks is part of the organization. It's oh, different. I get what you're saying. I'm talking I, about people that, that paid to have those seats they're in. They can't get moved unless they don't pay. Mm -hmm. So they can never. They always have the first right of refusal for their seats. Mm -hmm. Spike was That's part right. of that. I yeah. got you. He's grandfathered wow. in. He can't lose those seats unless they, you know, unless he says I don't want to pay no more. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, 
uh, what's it, James Dolan, the owner. I would go to the game every fucking game and never speak. You know what I'm saying? I always say hello to him. I'm sitting right next to him. We right by the Nick, the Nick benches here. I'm right here. And we're in, uh, I'm in three and four. He's in five, six, seven, eight. Those were his four seats. You couldn't walk in front of him. The security's throwing you out. Mm. Right? So one day, the first day he speaks to me is because I was dealing, I deal with Amon Shumpert. I help Amon Shumpert. Shump, what up? So he come over to me at a game. He see me, come shake my hand. What's up, Chris? Boo, boo, boo. And uh, James Dalton is sitting right next to me. First words he ever said to me, I mean, in fucking months next to each other. Never, and I say hello all the time, never speak. You know he could jump 42 inches straight off the ground. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, I crazy. Know. First, first thing he ever said to me, and I was like, yeah, that's one of my plays. I help out. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, what I'm saying is I told him my story about starting from the bleachers, sneaking in the garden and being up in the bleachers to now paying for seats that cost $3,500, $3,700 each. Per game. Per, per game. Per game. Per. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying I'm blessed, but I said the product on the floor ain't shit. Why do I want to pay this to be here? Mm -hmm. He just looking at me. He ain't saying nothing. And, and believe me, security is watching. They don't let you fuck with James Dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm sitting there talking because I, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And I know the security. They're not saying they wouldn't throw me out. But I'm just talking to the man. He just looking at me. And I said, the product is shit. You know, we're losing games. We're not a winning team. And I'm spending fucking uh, 7500 for two seats. I'd rather not come no more. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you do something? You know, and he just wouldn't say nothing. But I'm telling you that. The, the, the moves they could be making with a Mark Jackson, a great young coach that exactly. should be in Mark. What up? Mark, Mark turned that fucking Golden State That's Warriors his team. organization around, man. That's his team. He got rid of the riffraff. And yeah. let me tell you something. I work with Monte Ellis. Yeah. Monte, what up? Tay, what up? Monte, what's up? So listen to me. Monte's my nigga. That boy tough. You know what I'm saying? But again, he was part of the bad, you know, locker room. Shit. Right. Mark had to make a hard decision. He didn't want to do it, but he did it. Those are the moves that made their organization the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm, and he got that. again. He went to me the route of Popovich. He didn't want no negativity in my locker room. Give me good plays. That's gonna listen and work hard. That's it. And he started getting the result. Next, you know, they top fucking team. Mark Jackson did that. I try to tell B that he don't realize that. I be thinking that, like, basketball players want to be somewhat like rappers. Rappers somewhat got to be what like What you mean? Just, like, I'm just saying yeah, that. You told I'm me, just but saying, I knew me, that you already. going back and forth about saying, like, how <laughs> But I knew is. that already. Saying, That's part what, of the what, culture, what, eh? What I'm, what I'm saying is, this guy, yeah. how does that go back now to, you know, what you're doing now when it comes to music? Being that you got the passion that you want to be, yeah. you can hear it when it comes to what you want to do with basketball. Yeah. How yeah, is that? How, how is that comes with the music now? Exactly. Like, how do you, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I started a new company. Uh, you know, Murder Inc. People always ask, what's up with Murder Inc.? I see you see me, you see Irv. It's murder. It's still, it's still murder. It's still life. Murder. It's for life. Real murder. murder. This ain't, and it's not a joke. I believe that shit. This is real. So at the end of the day, I started another company, which to me is a morph version of a Murder Inc. But mm. because the business changed. Yeah. We always yeah. got to evolve. Yeah, we're in a podcast. Wow. This is not normal radio. Nope. Yeah. Okay, we evolved. That's right. Motherfucking right. Okay, so that's what the, everything evolved. You gotta evolve. But you gotta have the vision and understand how to evolve. And that's what I just did with Adventure Music. So instead of owning artists, I'm empowering artists. I don't want to own the artists. I want them to own their own record label. And I'm empowering them to own their own record labels. All through my knowledge and experience of 30 plus years in the game. You know what I'm saying? In my relationships. You cannot get that anywhere but right here one stop so i'm really your infrastructure and for that i take a small piece but you own all your music and i tell people how important it is to own your music because all the record labels you're talking about which i was one we did everything for the ownership of your music mm. any money you got was because we own your shit and it was all based on okay i'm gonna make x amount of dollars on your music so i, give you so I could give you this much mm. it's business right it's mm. business it's like so i can't overpay you they feel like they but I know I'm gonna make a million dollars. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, I could pay you 500. I could pay you 250, 350, and I still own it 
because I'm going to make, you know, it's business. It's just math. It's numbers. And I'm saying own your music because that's why they do these deals. Don't give it away. You know what I'm saying? And it's that ownership of that intellectual property. No, I like the fact, too, like, shout out to Dykeman Park, man. Yeah, Kenny, no what question. up, Kenny? Kenny, what up? Um, shout yeah. out to the, the mayor, DP. Ah, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mike, Mike what up? What up? Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. You know, <laughs> when you talk about Dykeman Park, I, I mean, I, I like to call it the, the Madison Square Garden, the street ball, just the way it's designed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I've gone up there just to watch, you know, players play, just a fan of the game. And. You, it's cool to see er, uh, excuse me, Chris up there with you know with the truck outside just yeah. branded, and he gives the artist an opportunity to oh, come to have court. That's right. You know what I'm to saying? To, to perform and kind of get their feet wet on like what it's like to be an artist. And then I give the winner the distribution see, so they own their music and can get their music. And now, how do you decide? Is it the fans the that? Fans. This is the new Apollo. Right. Oh man, it's crazy. Right. No, right. Hey, buddy, it's, it's crazy. The Yo, he's there every time. <laughs> Yo, you know, it's kind of so like I'm... to the point where when you're driving up the Dykeman and you're looking for that landmark, <laughs> you're not looking for a store or pole. You're looking for that fucking truck. truck. You I see that you truck out there? <laughs> you know that's where you are. So, so every Wednesday, what I did, I partnered with, the, of course, Kenny in the park with. You know, I helped Kenny out for now uh, so many years with the park and getting sponsors and shit like that. Uh, okay. And just organizing the park, I, you know, in, in the way he structured it. Because one of the big things I did, we, I just said it with the NBA, and I took that same philosophy. And if you would get Kenny up, you ask him, because he'll tell you how much better his game is now. Mm -hmm. I, said, Shh. I said, Kenny, are you worried about everyone playing, paying to get in all the team? And he was like, not really. I said, so then fuck them. Not in the sense of Not fuck them, but thing, shorten it. Make it more, make it smaller so every team, because there's only but so many good players exactly. circulating in the street ball exactly. game. So if I got 20 teams, it's too hard, it's too thin. Now he's shortening it down. It's like every team got three, four really good players. Quality. NBA. Remember I said that's what they want? Mm -hmm. Kenny should want the same thing. That's right. It's going to make everyone want to come for every game, not just the big game, because this one team has the best play. Quality. And that's what it is. Right. You know, the yeah. fun, the, not to cut you off, Chris, but yeah. I just wanted to say to you, though, one of the things that I respect the most personally, and I want you to know this from me when I'm listening to you, is like, you got to learn to respect the people that have been through things and seen things yeah. and still choose to try to help and empower you. And that's key, like, man. We don't so have that anymore. Man. That, you know, might learn something or know something. And it's like they like like I said, I look at a lot of stuff as like errors. And I feel like when you when you attach yourself to certain errors, that error that that's a little bit older than me, it was the game is not to be told, it's to be sold. Yeah. So it make you feel like if you get out the hood, I can't go back and empower or help nobody else because Bullshit. I was taught to get up. You see what break, I'm trying to say? But it's chain, people baby. like you. This is break what I'm trying cycle. to say. It's people like you that that sitting up here saying that you don't have to do that. You could you could have been through all of that and still uh, turn around right now and look. Now yeah. I'm passing off to a kid how to empower through the yeah. music because of owning a company and you I'm showing like, them how that's to own a business thing, and run like, it. That's what it's like, about. It you know is. What I'm it is. In my in my in my in my opinion, that's what it's all for me. That's all it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Much blessings uh, to you, brother. You. That's what's going to be all about for. because I'm telling you uh, what you just said is, and I said break the the chain, break the cycle because that's all it does is perpetuates because mm -hmm. that's what happened in you you do it You're to right. the next one and so on and so mm -hmm. on I'm like no that's what keeps the game to be suckers that's, what, that's why we can't yeah. that's why niggas can't get together the culture the black culture the black community the minorities Latin, it don't matter. It don't matter. That's Word. what it's all about. That's why we started Again, and I first, talk all of that. That's the reason why we started A this, voice so to be we heard, can, man. So we can you know figure out saying? how to make sure that we bring people on. If we're talking you the game I mean? of life, the game of life, we're way behind. For real. As a culture, as people. As a culture. And, you know, no matter what the white people want to say. They ain't got nothing to do with the way we think now because no, of how they, times have changed and evolved. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Because of they how things work. They acquired so much more wealth yeah. and more businesses and land. How do you catch up now? And yeah. they know that. Yeah. That's and why that's we got to keep going. that's why when they don't talk. Fairly, like you said, break wrong. the chain. You said break the chain break so the we could keep going so we could catch up. Let me tell we you might something. not never tie the game, but we, as long as no, you in the game, you will always have a chance to no, win. it's not about no, time. We no, that's what I'm, even they, that perspective. Let me tell you something. There's a lot hey, of brother, niggas that hey, quit, hey, Chris. Hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, 
A lot of niggas don't quit. get it fucked up. The reason we don't win is because niggas sell out. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Every time there's a check dangle in front of niggas, they take it. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh, you say that because you got money. No. I, when I didn't have money, it was my money. When I didn't have money, I spent my money. I lost my money. I made my money. And when it was time to do it, yeah, I partnered with Def Jam. I controlled everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was like, it was a mindset. And the reason we went to places from before Def Jam was TVT, because we controlled it. And that's where the power and the money come. Wow. It's like, you got to control things. And it's like, you got to own things. So that's what it was about. You know what I'm saying? And that's what all of this to me is where the, we could win because they take all our ideas. That's true. Oh, for sure. So again, the money <laughs> isn't, <clears throat> I tell everyone, there's a reason I use my brother. I said he was the goose that laid the golden egg. There's a reason he was he was so coveted and wanted everyone wanted a piece of him and would pay fifty thousand just to talk to him. Cause he had the fucking idea. You know, I use Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, his partner was Steve Wozniak. He was the coder. He's the one that wrote the code. Steve didn't write the code for all of this Apple shit. Steve Wozniak did. He was the main dude. He used to be mad at Jobs. Why? He said, because you're getting all the, the press, all the things, and I did the work. I did the code. Nigga, you ain't shit without my idea. And that's what we are as people. We have the ideas. We're the creatives. We're the ones that run this shit. Yo, man. But you got to take control. You can't like, get no better than that. A, if you sell out for the check, they own you. Absolutely. And that's the problem. That's staying with It's simple as that. Educate the them. It's simple as that because we give our ideas and that's it. They take it and own yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything. Yeah. That's why hip hop is the biggest form of anything in the world ever. Bigger than any religion, anything. There's nothing bigger than hip hop. You heard it first. So that's why you got it, you know what I'm saying? But we don't own hip hop. That's the crazy shit. That's the crazy They cr- took it. Yeah. <laughs> we fighting to get it back. Educate them. <laughs> I get your music. I get that. Own your shit, yo. You heard? I <laughs> your music. Yo, own man, your I, shit, yo. I, I, wish we, I wish we could stay longer, man. We yeah, running out of doubt. time, man. Oh, big bro, we we really appreciate you coming Thank out you, and bro. being a part of the show, man. This was something that. It's a good platform here. This is dope. Yeah, man. It's more voices to be heard, more. It's more to come. We just getting started, man, but this is something that's needed for the culture, man. It's your boy A Butter. Your man B Bowen. Hey, make sure y'all check us out on the Twitter. Follow us at Streets First PC. On the Facebook, Streets First Podcast. On the Instagram, Streets First Podcast. Holla at your boys. From Park to Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> the Bulls it's right a outside. Rap. <laughs> the Bulls outside. <laughs>